excited to share and announce the launch of Amazon Nova. We are introducing more than 50 plus new products. We are launching our new flagship model. Today, we'll show you how Gemini is delivering our most intelligent AI experience. OpenAI is the most advanced and the most widely used AI platform in the world now. It can run 1 million tokens in production consistently, more than any other large-scale foundation model. These are the most capable and most cost-effective. I know how this feels and let me tell you that I knew nothing about AI last year, but now I'm building my own AI projects and so can you. Today I'm sharing a simple plan that shows you where to start with AI, even if you never touched it before. I will walk you through the best tools to learn, how long it really takes to see results and why this roadmap can help you land a new job or create your own AI projects. AI is shaping our world fast, so if you don't catch up, you risk missing out. But if you follow these steps, you will unlock skills that can set you apart. So let's get into it. So I want to structure this video giving you actually two roadmaps. The what I call AI builder roadmap for people who want to create AI from scratch and then the AI user roadmap for those who want to use ready-made AI tools to boost the projects or work. And I think it's important to have a basic grasp of both approaches before you decide which one fits you best. That way you will know exactly what it takes to build AI and what it takes to use AI. So you can pick the path that help you to reach your goals. So let's start with the AI Builder Roadmap. So first thing first, you will need a solid understanding of at least one programming language and most people choose Python. It's the go-to for AI because it has an easy syntax and very robust ecosystem and community. Basic knowledge includes data types, so integers, floats and strings, control flows, so if-else statements and loops, functions and modules, and also using libraries and managing environments like PIP or Conda. Master these concepts and fundamentals and you will be uh, all set to tackle more advanced AI tools and frameworks. Then we go to mathematics essential and AI frameworks. So, and so the first thing is to think about linear algebra, probability and statistics. But please don't panic. You don't need to be a math genius. You will come across vectors, uh, matrices, derivatives, distributions and more. However, you won't be doing all this calculation by hand. So one key area is linear algebra, so understand vectors, matrices and transformation. Neural networks perform a lot of matrix operations and so you need that in your background. Then for probability and statistics you can grasp the basic of distributions like the Gaussian or the Bernoulli hypothesis testing and how to measure uncertainty. But let me tell you why you don't have to fear the math. The beauty of Python libraries like NumPy, SciPy, uh, Pandas and Scikit-learn is that they handle most of the heavy lifting for you. As long as you have the conceptual understanding, these packages will take care of the actual computations. This way you will be free to focus on building and experimenting with models rather than getting lost in uh, equations or other calculations. The main Python libraries and frameworks for AI are uh, definitely NumPy and SciPy. These are fundamental packages for scientific computation and handling math uh, operations. Pandas is great for data manipulation and analysis. It's like spreadsheets but in uh, code. Scikit-learn is excellent for classic machine learning algorithms and easy uh, model prototyping. Then we have TensorFlow and PyTorch which are the leading uh, deep learning frameworks that let you build and train complex neural networks. And then we have Keras which is a high-level API for quickly prototyping and building neural networks models that is often used on top of TensorFlow. Then let's go to introduction of machine learning and the uh, fundamentals. Well, as its core, machine learning or ML is about teaching computers to learn from data without being explicitly programmed for every possible scenario. It's used everywhere from recommending products online to detecting diseases in uh, medical images. And so this makes ML super important in modern technology. And so first you have to understand the general ML workflow. So first you have the data collection and preparation. So you gather and clean your data. You handle missing values, then split into training, validation and test sets. Then there is model training. So you feed the training set into a model, adjusting parameters until you get good performance. Then there is evaluation and iteration. So you check how well it performs on the validation set and eventually the test set and refine as you need. This is the basic workflow for all ML works and all the ML categories uh, well, the first one is uh, supervised learning. So you have labeled data like images tagged as cat or dog, and you want to model to learn from these labels to predict outcomes 
for new and used data. And so here, key algorithms include the linear regression, the logistic regression, decision trees, and random forest. Then the second category of machine learning algorithms is unsupervised learning, which basically uh, it means when you have unlabeled data and want to discover hidden patterns. For instance, grouping similar customers together, which means clustering, or finding the main feature that describe your data. And so here, common algorithms are the k-means, hierarchical clustering, and principal component analysis, or PCA. Then the third groups of machine learning frameworks is called reinforcement learning, which is getting way popular now, which means that basically an agent learns by interacting with the environment and receiving rewards or penalties for certain actions. And this is an approach that powers a game playing bots like DeepMind's AlphaGo and is also useful in robotics and simulation. So we cover ML, now the next step is deep learning and neural networks. So deep learning is a specialized area of machine learning where models called neural networks learn patterns from uh, a vast amount of data. It's behind major breakthroughs like advanced image recognition and powerful language models. And so this is a simple categorization of major neural networks architectures and why each one matters. So the first one is the uh, basic one, the feed-forward neural networks. So these have a straightforward flow of data from input to output and there is no feedback loops. And this is ideal for simpler tasks where data is not uh, structured in sequences or grids. Then you have the second group which is called the uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, or with the acronym uh, CNNs. And CNNs are specialized for spatial or grid-like data, such as images. And they use filters, uh, the convolutions, to automatically detect features like edges, corners, or textures. And why this is powerful? Well, because instead of manually telling a computer what edges look like, a CNN figures out on its own, making it highly effective for uh, face recognition, uh, object detection, and more. Then the third group is recurrent neural networks, so RNNs. And so RNNs are designed for sequential data, like sequences or time series. They remember information from previous steps to inform future predictions. And LSTM, so long short-term memory networks, fix the vanishing gradient problem by introducing a memory cell, enabling them to retain information over many steps, which is crucial for language translation, for example, or text generation. Then we have the fourth uh, amazing category that is getting way popular now, which is transformers and large language models. So transformers are a more advanced architecture that process entire sequence in parallel using a attention mechanism to determine which parts of the input are most relevant. And large language models are massive transformer-based models like GPT that learn from huge amount of text, often billions of parameters. And they can generate text, uh, summarize information, answer questions, and even write code with impressive fluency. And why this is exciting? Because transformers and LLMs are shaping AI right now in ways we never thought possible just a few years ago. The next step in the roadmap is what is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. So RAG combines the power of large language models with external data sources to enhance the accuracy and relevance of AI-generated content. Instead of relying purely on a model memory, it pulls it fresh context-specific information. And so how does it work? Well, basically, the system retrieves relevant documents or data from an external database or knowledge base. It feeds this real-time information into the language model, and the model then generates an answer that's more up-to-date and context-aware based on the document that you send to the RAG. And a real-world example of this is a chatbot that consults a company internal database for the latest product details instead of relying on potentially outdated data. Then the sixth step of the roadmap is what is called model deployment and ML ops. Building a model, it's only the first step. To provide real value, you need to deploy it so that people can actually use it. Here you can think of Netflix actually deploying the recommendation model in their app. And MLOps, or machine learning operations, is how you streamline this entire process. And so here you have things like the containerization, so you package your model and all of the dependencies into a container, and this makes it easy to run on various machines without worrying about uh, software conflicts or things like that. Then you have uh, orchestration, so when you have multiple containers, you need a system to manage them all. And so Kubernetes, for example, automatically distributes containers across servers, uh, scales them up or down as the traffic changes and monitors the health. Then you have CI and CD, so continuous integration and continuous deployment 
end. So the idea here is to automate the pipeline for testing, merging changes and rolling out new versions of your model. And so this means that updates can happen more frequently and reliably. And then you have monitoring and maintenance. And so the idea here is that over time data changes and so uh, your data changes in a way that degrade the model performance. And so monitoring tools let you catch when predictions start to, uh, well, to become wrong and basically notice these uh, problems in a proactive way. And so long story short, MLOps ensures your AI system is stable, is scalable and continually improves. This is how major tech platforms roll out features seamlessly while keeping everything running smoothly. Now, this is definitely a complex roadmap and I won't lie to you that it takes time to master all of these topics and you will need to work on this in an incremental way. Maybe you can spend a month on the machine learning part and start working only with that skill and with time upgrading to more advanced topics like LLMs. My rough estimate would be six months for a person with uh, already basic code experience to complete the whole roadmap, but this is only if you can really bring in consistency every single day. And let's also be clear, this is to compete for the highest paying jobs in the market right now, so I think it's definitely worth it. Now let's move on to the other alternative AI roadmap, what I call the AI user roadmap. So let's start by identifying the real challenge, which is not falling behind, but it's finding focus. So why there is so much confusion for AI users? Well, big players like Google, OpenAI and Amazon are releasing the best model every single week. Plus the same company might offer multiple versions of new features that maybe overshadow older ones until you realize that actually the older tool might actually be faster, cheaper or more reliable in practice. And so what is the takeaway here? Don't let the hype paralyze you. It's not about mastering every single AI tool, it's about identifying and consistently using the few that generally improve your work. So now that we identify the problem, second step of this roadmap is to create your lean, powerful toolkit. So with hundreds of apps, plugins and services promising you to revolutionize your workflow, it's tempting to keep searching for the latest, greatest option, only to end up using none of them effectively. And so the solution is to create a very lean toolkit strategy only for you. And so what you need to do is to identify a recurring need. For example, maybe you have to constantly do online research and cannot afford to waste time sorting through misinformation. And so if this is your use case, then what you need to do is to find your best fit. Test a couple of AI research tools like Google Notebook, LM or Perplexity. Pick the one that's accurate and efficient for your needs. And in case you're lost here with all the AI models, this is a good representation of some of the tools you can choose from. Now that you identify the tool, the next step is to commit. Use it daily until you're fully comfortable. This ensures the tool solves real problems rather than being a shiny new distraction. The next of this roadmap is how to actually use AI every single day. So the problem is that sometimes we use long or fancy prompts to tell an AI exactly what we want. And so writing these prompts again and again can be a pain. And so make a central spot like a special folder or a page in an app where you save all of your best prompts. You can sort them by category like emails or summaries or brainstorming. And why doing this? Because you always know where to look when you need a prompt. For example, in my case, I use Notion for my central database of prompts and you will be amazed how much more frequently you take advantage of AI when it's really without friction. The next step of this roadmap is managing a never-ending AI news cycle. So again, what is the problem here is that every day there seems to be a new AI breakthrough, maybe Mega Brain 3.0 or Ultra GPT or something similar. You feel like you have to learn it all at once, which can be super stressful and exhausting. And so the solution here is to pick your favorite sources. Don't follow every blog or podcast about AI. Instead, just choose one or two that you really trust and spend about five minutes a day checking them for uh, cool updates. And then you can plan a weekly test drive. So set aside half an hour once a week, let's say on a Sunday, to try out one new feature or tool that you read about. For example, what I'm personally testing this week is a new tool called ClipRun, which allows me to run my Python code on the browser completely for free. Before to run Python, I had to install Python on my machine, download and get familiar with code editor, usually debugging some version error before actually being able to run my code. Whereas now with this new tool, I don't have to go through any of that pain. You just add it to Chrome, no setup needed, no sign up forms or, and no time limits at all. With the clip run, you can scrape websites without leaving your current page. You can analyze data using libraries like pandas or numpy that we 
uh, discussed before. And these libraries are already installed, so you can use them straight away. And you can even schedule tasks to run automatically. And it's also perfect if you want to learn Python and test your code straight away. And this can obviously help you to speed up those everyday tasks, like grabbing information from a web page, uh, visualizing data as part of your analysis, or downloading and uploading uh, files like CSV or JSON in your code. Everything is free except for a couple advanced features like scheduling scripts and uh, backing up your code that they call clips. I genuinely love this tool and I want to thank them for reaching out to me and sponsoring this section of the video. Definitely one of the best Python free tools. So make sure to try it out from the video description. And so what we were saying is that by trying out just one new thing at a time, you won't feel the pressure of all of these new AI tools. You will learn what it really helps you instead of collecting too much information that you never use. And so to put all this together, focus on practical wins. Instead of chasing every new tool, look for the select few that address real pain points in your job or personal projects. Then reduce friction. So keep all of your best prompts in one database and use that for all of your AI work. And then we said to learn at your own pace. Follow one or two trusted uh, curators for AI news, then devote a small consistent block of time to hands-on experimentation for those tools. And there you have it. This is your AI roadmap, highlighting the core skills and steps you can follow to master AI, both from a technical and non-technical perspective. If you found at least one useful information in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next videos. And in case you want to see another roadmap to get a job in data analytics like I did, I will leave it here at the link that you see in the screen, plus another video that you might like. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.